Hello everyone, Strategist here with a bit of an update that I need to throw in outside of the normal schedule for the Thea 2 bins. It was brought to my attention not but a few hours ago that somehow I overlooked two more possibilities for human males growing up, namely the Vol choices for the Return of the Vol expansion. How this escaped my thought, I don't know. But if we go and look at them, we will see that there was two events added to the end of the list, and normally this would be at the end of the normal human list. That is where you would find it. They both say mysticism, chance, and male, but there's two options that, ha that have a possibility of showing up. And we said they're both G1, so you're only ever going to see one of them or the other. If we go and look, it does its normal checks as if this was almost a female, or any other human for that matter. It checks a primary stat, and it checks two different numbers. Of course, being exceptional at the stat gives you better chances for things. In this case, our stat in question is mysticism. You need a four or higher, but seven or higher locks it in. What the event on the right checks is see if you have someone with four or higher mysticism. It says female, but it's really checking for male. And then it gives you a 70% chance of this event happening. However, if their mysticism is seven or higher, then it's guaranteed because they're both in the G1 block. In order for the event on the right to trigger, however, you either need the Divine 15 tag or the Quest 74, or not or, and the Quest 74 tag. The Divine 15 tag we've discussed previously. It's the tag that shows up if you, when you go down the Divine Quest, you haven't followed your deity to necessarily the letter, you've chosen one or the other one of the domains. If you end up in the situation where it gives you the choice of domains, one of them says magic, that's tag divine 15. It's not really necessary though, as I'll point out with the other event, but the primary thing that you need to keep an eye out for is you need to have gotten the tag quest 74. Now, without going into all of the Vol DLC events, quest 74 happens all of exactly twice. It happens once at the beginning of the Vol Return event, which is where you read something along the lines of there are no remains of bodies, not even the signs of struggle, what have you. As soon as you read about that grove, you've already gotten a tag. It does not matter what your result is at the end of this. You've already gotten your tag. You're good to go. The other possibility, however, to get the Quest 74 I would like to point out, and that is you can get the Quest 74 tag if you've released the Kraken Pearls. If at the end of this quest, you've decided to release the Kraken into the water so that it may continue living with its babies. In order to qualify to release that, however, you need to have completed the Kraken quest. In order to complete the Kraken quest correctly, under the Kraken Pond event, if you do the event with a water demon in your party, it gives you the option when fighting it that in fact, because you have an aquatic body, you can take the pearls into yourself for safety. If you do this option, then you get Kraken Quest. So again, your two options to even have the ability to do this is to either find the Vol, get the Vol Quest started, return to the Vol Camp, or to have released the Kraken into the ocean. Clearly, the, the, these both make perfect sense for why you can now be a Vol. Good on you. If you do the other event, the one to the left, in order to make this one show up, you only have a 40% chance, but it's a 100% chance again, as long as you have seven mysticism or higher. And this one requires the quest 74 tag, but not the divine 15 tag. Which basically means the divine 15 tag is only increasing your chance by 30%, but also a bit more than that because it gives the other event a chance to show up and then maybe this one, you know what I'm saying? Increases it by 30, but yeah, you know, you just need a quest 74 tag. They both lead to the same outcomes, and to point out, again, I don't think they intended it, I just kind of thought it was kind of funny, because both the events lead to the exact same outcomes, the outcomes line up right between them, and what it does is it creates a whole bunch of U's or V's that get increasingly more pronounced. Return of the Vol update has an event that looks like a bunch of V's. I, I thought it was kind of humorous. Now, all of the results, you won't have a choice. All of the results that come out of this will say begin the trials other than magic user or magic divine path. So really, once you've chosen this, you have no choices from then on out, but there are a lot of things that can break down out of this. 
it's almost a similar breakdown to what the the witch's breakdown was. Go figure, you're looking at a magic user here. And I will be adding this to both the human, uh, the, the PDF for the human video, and I'll relink that same thing underneath this video, just so all the numbers are together. The first choice that can happen, you know, again, if you have a magic user, or if you have that divine 15 tag, 35% of the time they become a vol. If you don't have a magic user or divine 15 tag, 10% of the time they still become a vol. If that doesn't happen, 25% of the time, they become a very buff, unliving human skeleton. They get the Witch Skill Pack, they get a full 10 to Destiny, 5 to Maximum Spirit Health, and a full 9 to Mysticism. Which, they've already got this Witch Skill Pack. This isn't looking bad at all. If uh, that doesn't happen, then you have a 4% chance that they're going to die. It's, it's, it's the normal death event thing. 4% chance they die. If they don't, 12% of the time they become a bat with a witch skill pack, 8 to mysticism, the magic user tag, 6 to destiny, 5 to intelligence, and a buff 10 to their physical stat. Which is really good. I do like that. And then for some reason there was just an extra adventure and no, that should have gotten rid of for this video. And if that doesn't happen, 35% of the time they become a gusla. And lastly, if none of those happen, they become a Gusla again, but they are they are weakened. They have a curse. They've lost wisdom, mental, and physical health. Yeah. Breaking down those numbers, what this does is, if you're a magic user, you have a 41.5% chance to become a Vol, a 14.625 to becoming an unliving buff skeleton, a 5.0544 to become that buffed bat witch, a... 12.97 to become a Gusla, a full 24.09 to become weakened Gusla, and a mere 1.755% chance to die. If, however, you somehow qualify for this, but you don't already have a magic user, and you don't have the magic divine tag, which by this point, you should probably have a magic user. If you don't have it, they might have died. Sucks to be you in that case. Your chances are quite a bit different. You only have a 10% chance to get a vol. But this means you now have a 22.5% chance to get an unliving buff skeleton, which is really good. A 7.7 .7 to get the buffed bat witch, which also counted as a magic user for future events. A Gusla has a 19.95, and the weakened Gusla a full 37.06. And of course, your chance of dying is increased to 2.7. That's really it. I, it's just something that I had to address before I started going to the Vine Quest proper. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't supported the channel yet, you know, give the video a bit of a thumbs up and definitely subscribe up above. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.